Praise the Lord. I'm Pastor Kevin Williams Jr. And I'm First Lady of Marlboro Williams. We greet you in the name of Jesus Christ and we invite you to watch our sermons and Bible studies that it may uplift you. And please visit our website, gbwtalbion.org. And remember, we love, love you in, in Jesus', in Jesus name. name.
have your Bibles, please turn with me to the Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter number 28. And today we are interested in verses 1 through 8. I apologize for a lengthy scripture text, but this is Easter, Resurrection Sunday, so I thought it would be appropriate if we will have the correct text. We'd like to give to this ministry, those out there virtually, those that's here electronically, you can do so through our Cash App. Cash App is dollar sign, G-B-W-T-A-L-B-I-O-N. All capital letters. Once again, our Cash App, if you'd like to give electronically, it's dollar sign, G B W T L B N. If you have St. Matthew chapter 28, please stand in. And the reading for those that can stand, I understand Sister Marilyn Taylor. Amen. If she can't get up, just the fact she's in the house. Amen. Amen. And praying that God's anointed falls all over her body. Amen. Amen. St. Matthew chapter 28. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sculpture. And behold, there was a great earthquake. For the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and set upon it. Yeah. His countenance was like lightning, and his raiment white as snow. Yeah. And for the fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, Fear not ye, for I know that ye see Jesus, which was crucified. Yeah. He is not here, for he is risen. As he said, come see the place where the Lord lay, and go quickly and tell the disciples that he is risen from the dead, and behold, he goeth before you uh -huh. to Galilee. Yeah. There shall ye see him, lo, I have told you. And they departed quickly from the sculpture with fear and great joy. And they run to bring his disciples word. Heavenly Father, we thank you today. Most important, she went to the cross for our sins. And three days later, you rose from the dead. We pray for everybody out there on today, still going through the situation of dealing with this pandemic, praying for all our children, the schools that you protect them. But we're bringing forth this word and ask you, God, to bless it. That it may uplift somebody, encourage somebody today in these trying times. Let my flesh be submissive and use me as a ready vessel to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. We pray and ask this in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Amen. You can be seated Amen. in the house of God. We're going to do communion immediately following this sermon. And you don't have to worry about altar call because we, my wife will be anointing everyone. And if you cannot come to the front and you would like to take communion, we will serve you at your seat. Today's sermon is entitled, Get Up. Get Up. We look at the writer here, Apostle Matthew, also known as Levi was an evangelist, yeah. and his occupation was a tax collector. As we are approaching the end of the tax refund season, it was very interesting that the Apostle Matthew's occupation was as such. This book identifies the coming of Jesus Christ fulfilling the Old Testament prophecy and it also is the opening of the New Testament. It is the beginning of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and it starts off, and generally speaking, all the Gospels, including this one, deals with the death, 
burial, and resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. If I have to define get up, it is said to be rise or cause to rise from bed after sleeping in or become strong or agitated. My message on today, and I won't be before you long, my message on today is not only that Jesus Christ over 2,000 years ago rose from the grave for many of us, especially after coming out two years of being in this pandemic, it's time for us to get up as well. I never thought in my lifetime, in my young 40 years, I'll be 41 uh, next Saturday. And I was out to breakfast. My dad took me out to breakfast this past week while my car was being worked on. And they could not believe, because I didn't put the uh, venison lamb, didn't put the dye in my beard yet, that I was his son. <laughs> But we have all been through a tiresome two years. Yeah. We've all, ourselves, went through some tired times. And if we didn't go through some tired times, we know somebody that did. Yeah. Many of us has lost jobs. Some of us lost our house, our vehicles family and friends due to this thing they call the coronavirus. It's been a very depressing two years, especially pastoring, because the church was affected as well. And it's hard to lead through tough times. It's easy to lead when every seat is packed, the praise team is singing like Motown records. <laughs> the spirit is high. The church is clean. Thank you, Sister LaDonna. Amen. And, and everybody's paying their tithes and offering. Amen. <laughs> but how can you lead at such a time as this? I had to believe that the early, early church, because the day of Pentecost was the start of the church, from the time on that Friday when Jesus laid down his life, yeah. I had to think before he got up and a word was sent back, what was those believers thinking? What was they going through? In fact, the scriptures tell us that when Jesus laid down his life, the sun began not to shine no more. They said that it was as if a dark cloud had come upon them. It was dark in the land. Although we wasn't there during this time frame, I believe many of us had the same thought. They said people was dropping like flies. They told us, we can't go nowhere. Stay indoors. If you have to go to the grocery store, stock up. Amen. Y'all remember, because they was buying all that tissue and toilet paper. Yeah. 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 I was thinking to myself, what is you going to do with all this <laughs> tissue and toilet paper? Right. Yeah. <laughs> but somehow, we came out of this pandemic. <laughs> At least that's how it's looking now. And although that we're still dealing with it, we're not where we at when it first started. Do I have a witness in the house Amen. on today? As I take it personal, but my father, who's here present in the flesh, Amen. and my mother, Growing up in Detroit, 
in the slums. And out of the ashes to grow myself, my sister, and my brother. The accomplishments that we was able to do in such a short time. To see from the lawns of Kevin and Sandra that their children would no longer have the demon of poverty stricken over them, their family. Those individuals that was not concerned with church, that we would somehow, some way rise from the ashes and get up from our situation. I often refer times to let people know as I'm proudly wearing this tight district elder robe yeah. on my body that uh -huh. this wasn't given. My wife can even tell you the hard work that we did, some that you know, some that you didn't know. But everything that I got, I had to earn it the hard way. My father, one thing he taught me is how to fight. Amen. Continue to go on. Mm -hmm. It don't matter your personal situation. Yeah. You have to stand in leadership not by talking. Because yeah. talk is cheap, Amen. brothers and sisters. Well, no, but are you able to deliver in tough times? Yeah, are you able to send your sister through nursing school mm -hmm. when nobody else can afford the bill? Mm -hmm. Was you able to purchase a recruiting company to make sure that your oldest son can pursue his dream and be in a blue chip affiliate to have thousands of colleges recognize the skill and talent that you have. Was you able to be in a place that after my first relationship failed, because by no means I'm not perfect, able to let your son come in after being homeless in that situation. So you see me now. Amen. You see my beautiful wife. Amen. You see my smart, intelligent daughter. Yes. You see that yes. nice ride sitting past the uh -huh. Kevin Williams yes. Jr. seat. But you don't know my trials Amen. and tribulations that I face. Right. I cannot come in front of this congregation of hypocrisy and tell you to get up from your negative situation without giving you the testimony of myself and tell you how I got up All right. and dust off my shoulders yeah, and put my hands to the plow. Yeah. Yeah. It's time for us to get up yeah. from our situation. Yeah. It's time for us to get up yeah. from our circumstances. Uh -huh. I know that we are oppressed people yeah. and we have been oppressed for over 500 years. But I serve a mighty God yeah. It took us out of the cotton yeah. fields and put us into the White House. I wish I was preaching to at least three people on this Resurrection Sunday. You may not be where you want to be, but you definitely ain't where you used to be. I feel like going to the shepherd's place. Oh, today, I've been through hard times and had trials and tribulations. But God accepted back his prodigal son. I was in the pigsty wiggling down in the mud with the pigs. But it wasn't until my mother passed away that I was able to accept my calling. I was too busy running the streets. The same casinos I don't want my members in, I was in those casinos. The same clubs and bars that I don't want my members to be in. I was in those clubs and bars. The same marijuana and the same intimacy that I don't want my members to take part of. I was taking part of these same things. But it wasn't until I got up from my situation and God made it able for me to see. I watched was blind, but now I see him. And I give God the glory and thank him for saving me. I cannot be a hypocrite and stand before the congregation and the people of God.
God. And I was like Camille, that I always was perfect. I always was doing right. I never made mistakes. Jesus Christ himself went to the cross for the sins that we did in the past, for the sins that we're doing in the present, for the sins we're going to do in the future. He took all of our sins to the cross and nailed it on the cross. They spread him wide on the cross. They put nails in his hands on the cross. They put nails in his feet on the cross. They put a, a thorn of crown on his head on the cross. They spit in his face on the cross. They mocked him on the cross. Oh yeah, we got haters on that talk about us, that lie about us. We got naysayers. We got non-believers. They don't believe in the potential that we got. They don't believe that we're able to change things in this life. But I'm so glad that Jesus Christ didn't get down from the cross. He stood up there and took the beating on the cross. When they was giving him vinegar to drink, he didn't get down. He stayed on the cross. So he sins, hallelujah, that we committed. He took it to the cross. And even then, they laid him next to a murderer. They laid him next to a thief on the cross. He deserved to be there in the midst of those criminals, but he did not praise the Lord. So I'm going to get down from this cross because Pastor Williams don't deserve for me to die for his sins. First Lady Williams don't deserve for me to die for her sins. He took our sins to the cross. I mean, I'm yeah, so glad of today that Jesus Christ took our sins to the cross. Hallelujah. And then, don't you know, for all those pastors out there that think women don't have a place in ministry, if it wasn't for all the women, the beautiful women here on today, it would just be me, my dad, uh, my nephews and my brother-in-law. So I thank God for women. It was not men that went and ran to tell the disciples that Jesus had been resurrected. It was Mary, Magdalene, and the other Mary. Praise the Lord. So if you have a problem with women function in ministry, I won't be nowhere around you. Am I the right church on today? But I'm so glad that Jesus Christ he got up from the grave. Satan couldn't hold Jesus Christ. Demons couldn't hold Jesus Christ. No leaders and no help from hell could hold Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ all by himself got up from the grave and dust off that dirt. Came up out of that rabbit and claw and brought himself back to life. I'm so glad that death ain't a factor. Coronavirus ain't a factor. When it comes to Jesus Christ, it don't matter. You can be a so-called king, but I serve the king of kings. I serve the Lord of lords. Get it up. <laughs> 
Play me some song. Thank you, Lord. Yes. And it's just a crop. Out of all the different parables we saw in the Bible and all the different stories of importance, all the miracles we saw Jesus Christ perform in the Gospels in his earthly mission. The most essential to the body of Christ is that he was able to overcome death. He was able to overcome his own death because we saw him raise Lazarus his cousin yes, from the dead but how can you raise your own self you did and you raised your own self yeah. from the dead yeah. and out of all the religious leaders Jesus Christ was the only one to get up from the grave. So if you ain't serving this type of God, I encourage you today to maybe switch <laughs> to this type of God. Because it don't get no better. than this. Amen. So I encourage you on today, whatever your trials and tribulations that you're facing and going through, that no matter how hard it was, Jesus got up for us, so we need to get up. Amen. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, God.